Alright guys, by request I'm gonna do a video, uh, just a build video, mostly unedited. I'll probably clip out little bits of it here and there, depending on how stupid of shit I say while I'm filming, but um, <clears throat> I decided to just kind of show you guys how I put a craft together and um, maybe give you some creative ideas. Um, in this one I'm gonna be doing a, uh, a shuttle, an asymmetric style craft so I'm gonna specifically be talking about some of the challenges and issues that I've had with building these now that I've I've gotten kinda of decent at them um, but the first thing that I do with any mission that I'm building uh, is, is I, I, I lay out my parameters for the craft with single-use rockets it's pretty easy usually I'll just go to, to my mission whatever I'm doing in my mission at the time and I'll just build enough engine and tank onto it to get me there and back but I like to challenge myself, um, get out of here, partly by reducing um, rewards for missions and stuff like that, to, to, just to make the game a little bit harder and to make me have to be efficient with how I build. Um, I'm actually doing fine on money on this save, so it's not really that big of a deal, but it's fun to be able to make stuff as cheaply as possible. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenge that I like to give myself. Didn't need to do that. So for this one, the goal, oh, that's the wrong size anyway. The goal is to build a craft that can call my favorite little uh, lander which I'm going to stick on here in a second, the breakdancer. Yep. Open this guy. And I want to be able to haul this to either of Kerbin's moons to be able to land. This is my favorite little baby lander. It's so tiny. And it's perfect because it works anywhere. <laughs> I can actually haul this around. I, I bring this thing all over the place just because it's so little. <coughs> Makes it easy to bring on interplanetary stuff if I want to land on like Tylo. Well, actually, this one does not have enough thrust to land on Tylo. Um, any of the other moons of Jewel. Alright, so now I need my ring at the base of this. It's going to be structural. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using a payload bay. I had to decide how I want to do this because the payload, this is one of those weird atmospheric model things. Um, payload bays shield the stuff inside them from basically from producing drag but the structural tubes don't so if you have something inside a structural tube um, it whatever's inside there is adding a ton of drag to your system and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this goofy shaped thing with this um, payload fairing is because the fairing does actually shield your stuff from the atmosphere it's weird that like drag is calculated very differently it seems in this game is calculated very differently from uh, uh, the way heat is handled like at, having something inside a structural tube protects the, the contents from um, getting burned up in re-entry but it doesn't stop drag. All right, I need to make this a little bit bigger, I guess. How does that, that looks all right. That right, looks like dog poopy, but it works. Okay, I need 
need to disable fairing expansion here. One of my favorite updates that was made to the game. It also makes grabbing it way easier. Uh, I feel like that's a bit of an unnecessary lip. I'm gonna re I'm gonna rebuild that. If you're gonna try, try hard, damn it. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. That was worth doing that a second time. Beautiful. I love a good transition. It's sad that there aren't more of those in this game. It's weird. A lot of these parts that like have the black line down them, they're all different. <laughs> I'm going to use one or two more in here. Make sure I don't lose this. Okay. Moving parts time. This is the part where we do fancy stuff. And I'm going to make a split payload bay shuttle just to be a nerd. Neat. So this is how the shuttle is going to open. Um, it's going to break uh, right here <clears throat> and fold in half. No, I'm going to use a medium size ring. Are there any of these that don't look dumb? This one's okay. I call these ones the lemon size for absolutely no reason. Wait. No, I can absolute this. I'll just do it by eye. Doesn't really matter. The uh, the way this is set up and the way it's going to behave by the aerodynamics of it, um, it doesn't actually matter if those are perfectly aligned because this ring is going to have to just be open on the bottom no matter what I do. There's no... That I can think of anyway. There's no way to attach an end cap to something <clears throat> that's not attached that you can move with like the hinges that um, still shields like provides a, a quote unquote nose cone effect to the front of the stack there's a little bit of goofiness in how the aerodynamics model in this game works um, and I won't be able to get around quite all of those quirks, unfortunately. But I can get around most of them. Plus, this kind of just looks neat. And it basically fits.
Oh, dang. No, that needs to be longer. Crap. <laughs> hmm. 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 Damn it. I don't want to have to rebuild that fairing. That one turned out so nice. But <laughs> it's not long enough. Actually, it is really long enough. I just, uh... actually put it on this thing having this nose cone on here will still help even if it's not as good as having a smooth stack I mean it's a little goofy that what's going on inside the craft matters for the aerodynamics but that's how the model in the game works and one of the goals for this thing I'm really I'm gonna min max this <laughs> there's a lot of fine tuning nonsense like this that goes into building a lot of the craft that I post and if you pick through the craft file sometimes you'll find stuff like clipped inside of other things weirdly or like I'll, you'll 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 see if you play around with them enough you'll see me do a bunch of weird stuff like that that like doesn't seem totally intuitive but most of it is to get around ways that the games um, mostly its atmospheric model isn't particularly accurate um there a, a bunch of people have recommended i use far and i i might screw around with it at some point but i just don't really care that much about it and honestly i like how the game um i like how the game performs well enough as it is plus when i build stuff now and i post it I know that anybody can uh, download that craft and use it if it's if it's stock. I don't have to worry about it not being compatible. It's kind of sad that console players can't download craft files. I really hope that something like that is implemented at some point. <clears throat> because that's really a big to me that's a big draw in this game is being able to share your creations how's that with the nose cone I wonder if that's clipped too far up and that's going to produce drag being up there I'll have to hmm I don't know, I've never built a body quite like this, so I don't know whether that's gonna... I guess it's going to anyway, because it's sticking out above it. Well, let's give this girl a big booty. Uh, half an orange? Ah, but this is the one that has no good... It has no good-looking skins. Mmm. Dear Keen, er, Keen, Squad makes, yeah, Squad makes KSP. We need more Rocco Max tank skins. <laughs> They're like the best size tank, but they have the worst look. Hmm. All right, so what engines am I going to put on this? We've got, what, seven, four... 13 14 1500 fuel ish oh yeah I gotta move you 1500 fuel I'm thinking skiffs wait what the fuck Wait a second, what the hell are you attached to? Ah, oh, I'm gonna have to rebuild that anyway. Well, never mind about the engine, I guess I have to build my fairing again. And I'll pick my engines out. Usually I start with the engines, I decide what engine I'm gonna use, and then I add the right amount of fuel to have the ideal thrust to weight ratio for it, but... Um, okay, 
gotta make sure I got this treed right. Yes, now it's correct. I don't know how that got screwed up. I thought I did that, I thought I placed that part before putting any of that shit up there. Whatever. Dumbass game, doing dumbass stuff. Usually I start with my engine. I pick out an engine and then I decide. how I want to, like, I, I build the craft around it with the right amount of fuel. But in this case, because my mission specifically involves uh, this payload, I am building it around the payload instead. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to balance engines on top of it. Damn it, that's not nearly as nice as the other one I did. I'm gonna get this. That might be better. Neat. I really should use hotkeys more. Beautiful. There we go. Saving that. Okay, so now that you're the right size... I kind of like shuttles with this style of payload bay, actually, because it makes it really easy to mess with the payload, like not having to deal with doors or, you know, sides of the payload that you can't see. Like the whole thing is just right here. <clears throat> oh, speaking of payload bay, this requires at least a small amount of computerized brain. And since I've got my payload base shielding all of this nonsense from atmosphere, I should really put the rest of my crap in here that I'm going to need because that will give me more accurate readings when I start looking at delta V for my engine. And we need a bit of RCS for docking capabilities. That might be a bit big and a bit overkill. I really don't honestly use a lot of RCS. And usually, usually on my shuttles, I stick the RCS tanks back here, but I've been having a lot of drag because, like, I use the... You'll see how I build this out, but I use the, the butt cone portion of it to store a lot of my junk because that's, that's how real the real shuttle and the, the Buran were designed. But it doesn't really quite play nice with KSP Zero Dynamics. So I'm gonna try to move. I, having it more of my crap up here will help with my uh, center of mass when I'm re entering, too. Because you gotta have your center of mass ahead of your uh, center of lift in order to stay stable when you're re entering. That'll work. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, now I need that robot. But where? Close enough. Open editor. Action. Oops. Boom. Target angle. Engage and disengage servo lock. So this is going to be a 30 second. 
that was loud. I don't know what that was. Okay. So add five. Oop, no. Wrong spot. Sorry, I'm just kind of blasting through some of this. I've <laughs> setting up these cows is a little bit tedious sometimes, but I want to be able to have a, a slow um, target. No, no, wrong spot. There we go. I want to be able to have a slow fold so that when it's doing this in space, it's not shaking around all over the place. I'm moving a lot of mass here, and even the little... Um, I'm really impressed with the, the robotics parts. Even the little ones, honestly, uh, when they're locked, they hold on really tight. Um, I've built one other shuttle like kind of like this, although this is hopefully going to be a better version of it. Um, and when it's locked, it's really solid, even in re-entry, and like... I, I I look really good at it on my videos, but I practice <laughs> and I definitely really biff some of my re-entries and, um, it puts up with it. Really? I, I, I like it. I'm, I'm impressed with, with these parts. Uh, they're really wobbly when they're free, but when they're, um, when they're locked, they are rock solid, even the little ones. Uh, the alligator hinges specifically work really well. I mean, I guess they're ideally shaped for this, but they work really well for this kind of stuff. I also use the bigger version of this, the, I think it's the G11, um, for my, my flip wing. I have a flip wing crack and drive thing that I built. Cool. Saving that. All right. So engine time, because I have to have engines on here before I start putting too many wings around it. And then I'm probably going to have to adjust because I'm after putting wings on it, I'm not going to have enough engine. Uh, let's disable crossfeed so you don't screw up my... Uh... Oh yeah, and you should not be staged. You don't want you screwing up my delta V calculations here. All right, engine engines. What are we engining? A mainsail, maybe? And something, so for, for a shuttle engine, the whole point of a shuttle um, is to keep your first stage engines. Because basically, with according to the rocket equation, ideally, each stage from bottom to top gets smaller as you go up. But as those engines get smaller, they also get cheaper. So your first stage engines are the most expensive part of a rocket, um, for the drive shit anyway, just because you have so many of them and they're so big. Uh, the the RS-25 on the shuttle was a good example of that. And the whole reason that they used that engine, um, you know, having a, a good combination of atmospheric and vacuum performance, um, even though they're so expensive is that if you're getting them back every time you're recovering the whole first stage because it's attached to your craft you're saving all of, you're getting all of that money back ideally in ksp you're literally getting all of it back which is super nice um but i need to find an engine really i need something with good atmospheric performance i like the main sail but aside from it probably being kind of overkill and really heavy for this design, it's just, I don't know, 285 to 310 is just not... Like, the Bobcat's at 290. So the mainsail is just, like, strictly worse than the Bobcat. Although, obviously, it's a bit 
uh, well, 6, 15, 2, 4, 12. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit higher thrust to weight ratio than the Bobcat, but it's less efficient, so, meh. And, like, the Skipper is a great engine for this kind of stuff, but it's really that 280 at sea level hurts. Like, that's even worse. I made a shuttle, one of the shuttles I made, I used the skiff. And that worked alright. <clears throat> the skiff is a good engine if you're only using one shuttle for the engine. You, if you're only using, or if you're only using one shuttle, if you're only using one engine for the shuttle, you want it to mostly be efficient in vacuum, but still functional at sea level. Where, like, you know, the skiff still produces thrust at sea level, whereas if I, the cheetah is obviously way more efficient in vacuum, but it's useless on the ground. It does absolutely nothing. So for this shuttle, I actually, I think I'm going to use a cheetah as my maneuvering engine. We'll see if it ends up being big enough to justify carrying a cheetah up there, because it is a whole ton. I may switch to a terrier, even though it's a little bit less efficient just because it's half the weight. Actually, that cheetah's probably appropriate. I feel like I'm gonna need more fuel tanks up here and that will justify the presence of that cheetah. Oi, but what for mains engines? Bobcats, we just stack bobcats? I mean, that 290 is pretty tasty, but really, The last time I was looking at this, the engines get pretty close to their vacuum performance right around 10 kilo, not even 10 kilometers, like eight, six to eight kilometers up. So I'm not, like I'm almost wondering for this, for this shuttle, I don't think the cheetah produces enough thrust even in a vacuum. 250, yeah, that's not gonna be enough. I was thinking at the, at the beginning of the burn, I could use a SRB or a little SRB up on the tail or something to, to hold it straight while we get into a vacuum functioning engines. But these, and truthfully, these engines, even when they're functioning at full power, isn't a lot of power. I need thrust. I guess I won't be using these for maneuvering because I'm packing either I'm one way or the other I'm bringing either a cheetah or a terrier. Um So I really just need to worry about my atmospheric performance. Kodiaks, maybe? The 285's not... A, uh. What's our thrust to weight ratio here? I need a calculator. Which one of these is a better thrust to weight ratio? I guess that'll answer my question. Too lazy to do this math in my head. All right. 260 divided by one quarter, 208 kilonewtons per ton. Oh, I should be, I guess I should be looking at the atmospheric 247 divided by 1.25, 197. Then the bobcat. Three seventy four divided by two, one eighty seven. So that's lower, lower thrust to weight ratio. And I really, I know the I know the mainsail is probably the highest, but I just don't know if I can justify a mainsail on. 
something this size. Like, that's a lot of engine. Maybe? Hmm. Hmm. It seems like the Kodiak might the Kodiak might be our winner. Because even though it is ever so slightly less efficient. Oh, only up to 300. No, 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 never, no, never mind. That's less efficient across the board. I saw the 285, and I just assumed it was 285 to 310. Well, that was a bunch of... I did all that math for nothing. Fine, we're stacking bobcats. Um, poopy. Two bobcats? Two bobcats going to be enough for this? I need a drink. <laughs> 